Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are. I thought this would be December. Um, Oof, it's only November 30th. <laughs> Tomorrow's day. December. By the time you're watching this on local access, it'll be December, which we're right in that. Uh, oh, holiday season. So last night, Dan and, I, Dan, Dan and I drove up to Ollie's. You know where Ollie's is? Yep. Uh, they have like reliable Canardville. food. Yeah, it's yep. not anything, you know. I've actually never it's eaten not, there. I drive no, by there all the it's time. It's just one of those places that you don't think about. And Dan goes, let's just go to Ollie's. And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, it's just the typical yeah. food. But we went up. Anyways, we were driving up there and it was dark. And um, is it me or does it seem like there are a lot more Christmas lights this year? I hope so. I felt, it seemed <laughs> like, I mean, I was just like, oh, look, lights, lights, lights. Like, I'm like, you know, the dog I mean, the squirrel. I, I was thinking about it, right? Because, I, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of all the waste of plastic, right? No. Like, I, but, I but you know, that stuff. is a product of the market and all yeah. of that. And so I was driving the other day and I was like, I was like, you know, think about how great the world actually is, that we're at a stage where people are so rich that they can be like, it's holidays, and I'm going to make this <laughs> massive thing as pretty as possible yeah. to Just the to equivalent me. of putting out candles right. in like the 1600s, right? right. right? right. right. We, the world has evolved so far that we could do these like yeah. magically insane things with like giant yeah. Santas Oh, I know. Some of the people with a floating thing. <laughs> I, um... So my, my one thing that I try to avoid is the mixing of the whites. Okay. <laughs> you know, because the LED bright whites are like deer in the headlight, white, white. Okay. And they're fine. But then if you mix them, them with the soft white, I'm like, nah, I'm, I can be a little critical of people's choices. I got my first outside lights ever. Really? What'd you get? This week. Pick? So we're going to put them out and sort of see how yep. it works. Yeah, we had, I mean, last year we had a... these really cool things that hung off the front of the house and like, they were like little, almost like snowballs and they shine. They were just really nice winter because I like to leave them up until, you know, I can go to the beach again. And um, <laughs> when Dan took them down, all the little clips broke. So we oh. can't, I mean, I'm sure we could hang them back up, but that's not happening. So I think I might. I we... think there's actually a Manchester wide uh, Christmas lights contest. contest there is well. or something. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm sure if you Google it, um, you can submit your house and people vote on it or something. But I'm going to, I think I'm just going to do, we have like a weird little tree. I think I'll just do that. I don't know. It I know it's, it's amazing too, because it's again, not an area I'm familiar, you know, yeah. familiar with. I've never, you know, we've only had our yeah. first house. It's not really something people would do in South Africa no. culturally. Maybe now I don't really yeah. know. But uh, you get all kinds of crazy products. You get like the nets that yeah. you can pull yeah. over a tree now. Dan loves and... the nets. I don't like the nets, but Dan likes, Dan's a I, fan of I, throw the net on the bush. I, I'm feeling like I might be a net person, but yeah. I got different mixes yeah. and, and, and we'll see. So and I'm gonna and take... maybe in 20 years time, I... I'll be one of those crazy <laughs> ladies with like I think the I'll, house. I think <laughs> I'll take those cool, see if I can take those cool lights, if they even work. And... Put them on that tree. They'll, they're not made for that, but who cares, right? They'll be like little white balls all over yeah. the place, and then maybe I'll put a colored light. And I don't know. But I'm making it a point this year. Festive. Now that, now that we're down to one house, um, <laughs> I'm going through a lot of my Christmas stuff. I have a hard time give, getting rid of my Christmas stuff, even though I don't use it all, but I like it all. Mm. And so, so I like to just open the box. And then I go, <laughs> oh, that'd be so much fun. And then I put it back in the attic. So, but I am going through and trying to like, I, I gave away a bunch of stuff to some friends the other day. You know, like I know we probably have a whole Rubbermaid bin of strands of lights. Okay. <laughs> that probably should just Maybe go I'll go check them out. All right. So, so we're in December. That's all good news. Yep. Um, I have less good news. No, no, that's should fine. We, should we Actually, leave I with this? Good, or well, well, or you, you want to save South the Af good stuff? No, no. So, you mentioned South Africa. Oh, the moronic variant. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so Omnicrom, in case you yes. haven't figured this out back home, oh is an anagram mm -hmm. for moronic. And anyone yeah. who's like kind of falling for this whole, right, so basically yeah. I shared a, I shared a uh, life cycle uh, meme yesterday, which was basically like, uh, people aren't getting their boosters. Call in the new scary variant. Yeah. Do something. And it's just this like cycle yes. of, you know, things are never going to return to yes. normal. And Well, you know, they will as soon as people decide they're going back to normal. Well, yes. People have to decide that. Or, or, you know, you could be, you know, those of us who just were like, well, we're just going to go on with life yeah. because you know what? Putting your life on hold for the government and then letting the government tell you when you can get your life back is probably a recipe for yeah. uh, 
unhappiness, well, I mean, disaster, like, just, you know, so just just say no so and go about your life. Omicron, which I guess is also in some so for, movie, so, is it, the, the, the doctor in South Africa that detected this because she, I think it's a she, started noticing patients with specific um, symptoms that didn't make sense. Yep. So they, they determined this is where this new variant came from. But the, the, the key part to remember, because you'll see headlines that we're, we're bracing oh, was... for it. The most predominant clinical complaint, complaint is severe fatigue for one or two days with them, headache and body aches and pain. So basically like, a, so the flu. A, a soft flu. Soft flu. Also, so, I mean, for folks who've been watching for a while, we've talked about, you know, how viruses are supposed to work, mm -hmm. right? So one of the things that will happen over time with mm -hmm. any virus is they mutate yep. to become more transmissible, but less lethal. Yes. Because the virus is like, eh, I want to live inside you, so I want to not kill my host, right? right? So two things on the Omicron. Yep. First of all, everyone's going, ah, it's a new variant. It's not, it was identified in July. You can go yep. look at the WEF website where it's the clinical name that starts with yep. a B. Yep. So it's been around for a while. So it's not actually a new variant. I think what the play is here is the media and Fauci who is they need the science. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, Tammy, come on. I, I think, like, like, I literally tweeted this morning and I was like, ah, who wants to help me pitch in for a hairless cat <laughs> that we can send him? Because that's literally all he's missing oh, at this stage. It's so I bizarre. am the science. <laughs> and it doesn't even make sense. So I, right now, I know, I in the past, say, 10 days, I've known a handful of people who've tested positive for COVID. None of them were deathly ill. One was fully vaccinated, two were not. The two that were not living in the house with another non-vaccinated person, that person lived just in their, they aren't secluded. The third person isn't getting it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. But th then that's how it is. See, but, it, but, but you know, like if it's we just, just mind boggling. if we had just behaved normally mm -hmm. from the start, i.e. not have hysterically overreacted yep. which you know if you're still following along uh team conspiracy theory is uh pretty much right, it, right. about the lab leak theory so yeah. again the only way one could plausibly explain the hysteria and the abnormal super ridiculous response to a new novel virus that it turns out yes there was an all-cause mortality peak, which was actually only in March last year, mm -hmm. it turns out. Um, one month where mm -hmm. it was, I think, 10% over, and then after that, and that was mostly in like New York and those right. places Condensed. where they put everyone <laughs> in, 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 you know, on the ventilators and basically killed them, but all right. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, if we just hadn't reacted so hysterically, but again, the only thing that really explains the hysteria is a very guilty conscience. Yeah. Now imagine you were the most <laughs> well-paid bureaucrat in America. I mean, I would say to rise to that level, you have to be corrupt. I mean, mm. I know that sounds like a terrible thing to say, but, but I do believe that. If you work for an organization that literally claims they are never wrong, right? then once you've raised to the top, Rosen, risen, risen to the top, then that means you're running an organization that claims to it be, can never be wrong. Right. And that and that's is just, crazy. Right. That's, not, that's not logical. That's not, um, that doesn't make any sense. So speaking of organizations that can or cannot <laughs> ever be wrong, uh, I don't know if you saw this. Someone actually sent it to me over uh, Thanksgiving weekend. And they were like, did you see this? This dropped on Wednesday afternoon late. And okay. I was like, what do we know, folks, back but, home? I was going to say, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, nobody's reading the news. So so anyone who drops a... So, so I'm going to teach you guys some propaganda tricks of the <laughs> trade. So if someone drops a press release the day before a holiday week, long weekend... They don't. It's garbage. It's something they don't want you to notice. And you should actually just watch the news yeah. for that area. So what came out uh, from our AG, so this is an article by Nancy West from In-Depth New Hampshire, and it has to do with the Lori's List. And so for mm -hmm. folks back home, the Lori's List is this list of uh, police officers. It's a secret redacted list that, you know, was in the newspaper with the blacked out names and everything. Anyway, there are 281 uh, 
law enforcement officers currently on this list. There was a lot of negotiation over the years because we and the courts of New Hampshire and Judge Temple and the Supreme Court of New Hampshire have ruled that there is a public interest in knowing who's on this list and that the list must be disclosed. Now for years, because it's the government, it's taken forever, and they still haven't released the list. Right. So according to this article, the list may only become available at the end of December. But what they've done in the interim is they have removed a bunch of people off the list. Mm -hmm. Now that seems a little shady because the law that we passed last year said that if, okay, there are these people on the list, they were claiming, mm, we're not sure people are on the list for fair reasons, it's a process, we, you know, let's give everyone a right, chance to right. kind of clear their names. I disagreed with that, but, but I think, okay, that doesn't seem like an entirely unreasonable position right. to take. But the idea was that anyone who wanted to get taken off the list had to petition the courts mm -hmm. so that you would have Some court sort of pleadings, you would have records, you would have a way of knowing who was on the list, who petitioned. Then they made those sealed. So now... Okay, we're literally like, here's a list of bad people. <laughs> Can you give us the names? And all they've done, is at least for the two or list. three years I've been working on this, they've just created more secrecy, less transparency. So the AG has removed 28 people from the list. But we don't know who they are. Uh, so, so this is uh, uh, Manchester attorney Robin Mellon. And she says, or he, I'm sorry, I'm not sure actually. Um, we don't think anyone should be removed from the list without judicial review. It certainly smells funny now that we are going to be, now that they are going to be public, people are being removed and they have not gone through the court process. Um, the state is working towards transparency, she said, but the attorney general's Tw 2018 protocol is not a transparent process. Now, for those of you who've been following along for a long time, well, no, I actually have been saying for years that there is a process to get on this list. I found it, I downloaded it. It was a 21 page process. It said you had to do X, Y, and Z, and that the police chief yes. had to, after all these 21 pages of steps, or maybe it was 16 pages, but whatever, it was, it was many pages. Many pages. Um, then for some reason, like they all started claiming, oh no, you just willy nilly get on, there is no procedure. But now that they're removing people secretly from the list, suddenly the protocol has appeared again. So now there is again a protocol to get on and off the list. So basically the long and the short of it for folks is shady, 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 I was gonna say, this sounds shady awfully muddy. stuff. And we in New Hampshire can do better. We should not be, this is do you not know, acceptable. Is any, do you know if there's any bills currently up at the legislature to clean some of this language up at all? Do you know? Um, so there are several right to know bills that have been submitted. I'm still working my way through them and I do need to do the reviews for the NHLA, for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, mm -hmm. who looks at the bills mm -hmm. through a liberty lens. But um, so this lawsuit, so the original lawsuit that started yes. all of this is... Everyone except Nancy West and the, the original plaintiff um, want to let the case go, but she is actually, their their organization nice. is going to proceed. Uh, so thank you for that, Nancy. So it's the New Hampshire Center for Public Interest Journalism, yep. right? So that's like the core yeah, well, because if you, ethical journalists. Right. I was gonna say, and because if, if, if the journalists can't get access to information that means nobody's getting access well, to well what we see is basically that is like the the recipe for how you end up with one state narrative mm -hmm. the regime saying this is the news this is the science <laughs> um so in terms of the bills actually there are bills the other thing that's been coming and going in front of the legislature for several years is this ombudsman yes so that would be an actual sort of separate tribunal so Yes, on the one hand, we're growing government, but also on the other but hand, we are trying to rectify right. a very serious problem. Yeah. And the reason I'm so passionate about open government stuff is you can't hold people accountable if you, don't know. if you don't know what they're doing. And it's not that we want to rake you over the coals mm. unless you're doing things wrong. So it's kind of like it's that mentality of... Remember under 9-11 and they were all, when they started with their big brother crap, right? And they were like, if you see something, say something. If you see something. something, say something. So we can't even see something to say something. Yeah. And somehow that needs to be acceptable to us. 
it's not. Um. So, um, so I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping we can fix this. I think we need to keep the pressure on. Yep. Um, I think people should care about this and be concerned about this. We can't clean up. And again, you know, I say this all the time, but we can either reform or burn it to the ground. Right. And I would prefer to reform. Right. But you know what? When you're dropping press releases the, the day before a long weekend, you're taking people off the list. You know, all the people who like to criticize me, I'm like, but you're doing shady stuff and we both know it. So yeah. stop. So. <laughs> um, Manchester's getting a $25 million grant. Oof. Now, just for those at home who forget, grants aren't free money. They're tax dollars that came from somebody's pocket. They might not have come from your pocket and my pocket completely, but they're still tax dollars. Whether they fund, stole the money from you and I and then sent it down to D.C. and paid a bunch of bureaucrats and then sent a little bit back, it's still tax money. So when people go, but it's a grant. It, Okay, and, and it's it's either a taxpayer money or it's debt-funded money, meaning mm -hmm. that, you know, what are we, $30 right. trillion Which dollars in debt? Which is still taxpayer debt. money. It's just next day, tomorrow's taxpayer Yeah, it's your money. children's children, you know, who, who so, may or may not be around. This is supposed to focus on the Granite Street to Queen City section of Elm, which I'm not opposed to, you know, some improvements. I don't know what's there. Like, there's not a lot... Is that like the Theo's area or yeah. where Theo's is? But that's what I mean, but there's only right. so much improvement I think that could be made there short of taking people's properties and, oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, this isn't an eminent domain project, No, 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 but I'm just saying, okay, so we're going to do One of the things they talk about doing, which I'm sorry, I don't get why we need it. Oh, maybe it's not at Elm, is putting a roundabout, I still don't think we need it, at south willow street in queen city avenue oh okay yeah but the, it's where like, that weird s it, is where the two car yeah, thing comes but I'm in like, yeah. so but there's already a weird like why is putting it in a circle how is that going to make it better because all the, one of the things the roundabouts do is eliminate the traffic lights which means you have more people going round and round. Actually, I don't know. Well, actually, I mean, this, the, the, the science yeah. on, um, on traffic flow is actually that roundabouts are the most efficient and yep. best way to organize uh, traffic flow. And in fact, uh, when my dad was uh, consul general in Brazil, they, we were in Rio for a while, but then we went to Brasilia, which is the main uh, uh, capital city of Brazil, yeah. which was literally like this... Um, it was a project, an experiment. They wanted to open up the Amazonian hinterland, so they actually uh, gave an entire city to a architect and huh. said, Built design the city. And that city does not have one cool. traffic light in it. It's all roundabouts and clovers. And uh, I mean, it's Brazil, so the traffic's um, insane, but it works. On this, I'm just gonna, I don't wanna miss stuff, so. Project will mitigate traffic congestion, provide increased transportation op options, including biking and walking trails, and a pedestrian bridge over Granite Street. Um, okay. I'm, I'm like, okay. And create opportunities for development through South Elm. So here's what I think. If I had $25 million for the city, honestly, you know what I would spend it on? I would cantilever a walking trail over the river oh, yeah. from Emmaskeg all the way yeah. to the ballpark. Yeah. And it could be, you know, well, that's what you I mean. could, it would you be could walk on the... Because why? We're the only city that doesn't have, like, Any nice water. things on the no, water. I don't it's know why. Stupid. We just, we keep talking, we, we, everybody always talks about it a little, and then it's like, roundabout. And you're like, oh, well, okay. Yeah. I, I'd I, rather have, I'd rather have some um, I mean, so quality the, of life, local, um entertainment improvements you know outdoor space improvements uh, business space improvements than a roundabout right and and that was partly why the cantilevering of a of a is that that's cantilever a, right? yeah. yeah it's a word right, you got right? it. You're okay. not making it up <laughs> Um, would be great because that's not there's, so disruptive, right? right? So we already created a problem by saying that, oh, there's this great, beautiful river. Let's put all the parking yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I don't get it. The, Maybe if we legalized food trucks, people could be down. You know, we could use those green spaces if yeah. everything wasn't regulated Damn, up the yazoo. Um, 
the bad one of the other bad things about this is that the city has to match it with five million dollars. So there's your ta- there's more tax increases for you. But um, but it's free. Don't worry. Yeah, it's guys. all free. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, Dan and I went down to Salem. We were cu- drove through Salem, New Hampshire the other day, and we I wanted to cut through the Tuscan Village. I don't know if you've been down there recently. No, I want to oh go God. see. So it's so it's so not New Hampshire. It's to me, it's so Florida. It's there's um, there's the old Tuscan rest. There's the Tuscan Village that has the Tuscan restaurant and the Italian store, right? And then across the street, there's all this new housing development, and there's. Um, most of them seem to be duplex and they're quite large. They're not little itty bitty duplexes. And then there's all these apartment buildings. And then you go a little further and there's, um, a Starbucks and there's a market basket and there's, and then it goes into stores. And I was like, that's really wild. So I could live in that house right there and walk to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or market basket. It was just like, it's so not typical of New England, but there were so many houses that I said, isn't this amazing? Like, why they're ab- apparently able to build housing? Um, obviously. Well, they had to. I mean, there were a lot of bribes and a lot well, of. Well, and they uh, had a piece of land to do it on because the racetrack land was huge. I mean, we don't have a huge parcel. And I'm of- pretty sure there was some kind of deal to make it like you can only do this if you make 30 percent affordable housing. I thereby. don't know. It all looks really, really nice. So I, I feel like I remember but I, that. But it's funny that I was like. You know, how come we don't build anything in Manchester? And I looked at Dan and I go, oh, never mind, because somebody would complain because these were duplexes, even though they were quite large. Oh, they, you know, they're in a they're in a single family neighborhood. We can't allow them to build right. duplexes. And then I was like, that's why Manchester. Yeah, never you know, I think, you know, people should just understand, you know, we, we I think we. I mean, I can. We th- want to control everything, but life is so uncontrollable. Yeah. It's like, why don't people just mind their own business and mm. focus on their themselves, right? Like, I feel like so much of what has happened over the last time could be solved by people just becoming a little uh, introspective yeah. and kind of like figuring out, like I got into a huge fight yesterday on, on Twitter. Someone kicked me off Twitter. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm, I'm sure my days are numbered, but I'm just like, oh, it's a toxic it's not time a good, suck. It isn't a good platform. And I never, I never did it. And then everyone was like, you, you should be on doing Twitter, it, right? And, and, right? Then, and then you're in. just like, oh no, this is bringing out just the nope. worst in me. But, but one of the memes I saw was, um, Imagine if people try to control their government as much as they try to control their neighbors. And I was like, yes, why don't we try and control the people who are trying to control the people instead of trying to control the people? Right. (laughs) And, and, you know, like this is a perfect time of the year that I wish more people would just. I mean, there's a lot of people who I do think have become tempered because of all the craziness over the last couple of years. Um, but then on the other side, then there's people who are just angrier. I, you know, I make it a point of when I'm in the store or in a restaurant, like I can't get past all the signs that have people have to actually say in a restaurant, we're short staff, please be patient. Can't you just be patient, period? Like, is it really? I mean, but I think that's also the over, I, I don't know. I, I, we're I, very high test. I um, think we need we, we yeah we need so we need some changes. But I did I see the two minute warning. Five, oh, five, five minutes. Five so we're okay. So um so I just remembered it is Tammy's birthday. So I'd like to wish Tammy twelve. A, I'm twelve. Now. <laughs> a very happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, coffee's on me later. Okay. Fine, I'll let you buy coffee. Uh, um, you was that it? That what that was what you remembered? You were yes. starting to say okay. So um, I did want to mention in case you missed it. Um. I think this was yesterday. The days all seem to mush together sometimes. <laughs> um, federal court ruled against the federal ban that was going to impact healthcare workers, causing them to lose their job unless they um, submitted to vaccination. So that's good for healthcare. And New Hampshire was one of the ten states that that filed the lawsuit. So good on you know. I mean, as much as I can bitch about things that Chris Sununu does, good on Chris Sununu for getting in on that. Oh, uh, I think it's and huge. This and this is this is a very important piece of the pie because it's a more, big deal. It is a big deal because it's our health Supreme Court decision. Yeah, we can't have our healthcare disrupted. Because science from no, people but, who aren't scientists. But the thing is, and here's the thing. I mean, actually, the term natural immunity mm-hmm. is now banned off yeah, Twitter. If that doesn't tell you everything you need to know, yeah. I mean, the science... The science doesn't make any sense if you know anything it, about science. It, it, the science is natural immunity is a thing. It is better for you, yep. and it lasts longer. Yep. In fact, people who had SARS-CoV-1, which, by the way, turns out also a lab leak... 
Yeah. You can go find the paperwork. I, I went through that deep dive and I was like, wow, what if every single horrible, Thing. gross virus that doesn't make sense, I don't know, like Lyme disease yeah. maybe, well, is actually a lab leak, right? So we basically have these mad scientists I am the science going around being like, you know, we should make things more transmissible, yep. more deadly, because that's what gain of function means. Yep. Um, and then release it into bat caves and just, I don't know, see what happens. And Fauci's on the record actually saying, and this is in the National Review, so you can go look it up from uh, several years ago, saying it would be totally worth it if it escaped and there was a pandemic. And I'm like, so you made crazy, gross, very disgusting viruses, and you think this is okay worth it. That. Yeah. How about um, you should get fired? This one's definitely getting banned off YouTube. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so McIntyre ski area started making snow this week. Oh, wonderful. Um, winter's upon us, so let's just start dealing with the winter stuff and, you know, finding things to do um, so that we can get through the winter without, you know, just locking ourselves in the house. So um, they they have skiing, they have tubing, I, obviously not yet, but they will. Um, the one thing that I did look up this morning, because I'm like, oh, tis the season, um, Courier Art Gallery. Um, you can always visit their website at courier, C-U-R-R-I-E-R.org. Um, this Saturday, December 4th, they have the caroling at the Courier, which is always really nice. And then um, Sundays, every Sunday, starting at 10 in the morning, they have brunch in the Winter Garden. And they have a really nice little cafe there yep, that everybody forgets band, about. Right? I think so. I didn't look too, too much. I mean, you know. I've, when, I've gone for like the jazz nice. Sundays. Um, so it's but really that nice. start So caroling this Saturday, um, brunch in the Winter Garden at the Courier Art Gallery, Sundays at 10. That's every Sunday. Um, you can get more information about that or what, um, what art is on display and what kind of talks they have and all sorts of stuff at Courier dot org um as carla mentioned there is a christmas lights contest so if you've got a decked out house and you think yours deserves recognition um i assume you just go to manchesternh.gov and search for christmas lights and there must be a link there or search for it on facebook um but that's all i got for now if you know of a small business here in manchester or maybe in the surrounding communities that you'd like us to talk about or look into a little bit more send us that via um you can send it via our facebook page or um, via email at manchtalk at gmail.com. That's M-A-N-C-H talk at gmail.com. That's all we got for this week. Stay warm, and hopefully there's not too much snow this weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye, guys.